there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how you can make this cute barrette. And you can even adapt it to make a brooch if you'd rather. What a cute way to welcome springtime, don't you think? We're using supplies from our sponsor, Paper Mart, today. The flatback marbles, the flowers, the barrettes, the pin bags, it's all affordably priced. You can go to www.papermart.com to find the supplies I used today. And let's go to the table and I'll show you how to make it. Here are the supplies we're going to be using today. We're going to use these foam flowers from Paper Mart. You get a big bag when you order them. They're really pretty and nice. We're going to use acrylic paints. I recommend the Folk Art enamels if you have them, um, but if not, any acrylic paint will work. We're going to be using some glass flat back marbles. These are about a dollar for a 16 ounce bag at Paper Mart. You're going to need some pin backs also from Paper Mart or Barrettes, if you prefer, and these are also, again, from Paper Mart, and they're great because you get a big bag and they're super cheap. Um, if you want to add glitter to your pin like I did here, see how sparkly? You're going to need some glitter. These are 99 cents a tube, and you can see how much I like it because I'm almost out of this. I do have a full tube over on my shelf, though, because this is my favorite color, the clear, and I use the green and you're going to need something to stick it, and I recommend Mod Podge for that because it really holds that fine glitter well. So the first thing you're going to do is um, I ran a little piece of double-sided tape across a tile, and I stuck down my marbles to paint. So this is, if you're going to make a bunch of these, do this all at once. Um, now our first thing we're going to do is get out our paint, and we are going to squeeze out a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. Mix the two colors together until you get a nice creamy yellow. We're going to underpaint our marble so that the red will show up really well on it. As you can see, you really don't need a lot of paint for this, so I recommend doing this in batches so that way you don't waste any. And you're probably going to want about two coats. I'm going to make that nice and opaque. Now I want to show you an example of um, what it looks like if you do the undercoat and if you don't. So this one, I did the undercoat with yellow, and you can see how much more bright that red is compared to that one, which I just did two coats of red. So uh, make sure you take the step, you take the time to do that step because it really improves the final look of your project. So then after you have the, um, the yellow painted, two coats of the yellow painted and it's all dry, you're gonna go over that with a little bit of red. It doesn't take too much. And um, I'm just using a quarter inch flat brush for this same as I did for the undercoating. And just give it a nice even coat. See how well that stands up? Very, very pretty. I like to use yellow as an underpainting whenever I'm painting red on something. And the reason I'm painting this on a tile is because I can just take a um, razor blade and clean it up when I'm done. And then we have one already done right there. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. And to make the spots, you can choose um, a couple different things. If you want bigger spots, you can use a pointy Q-tip or the end of a paintbrush. Or if you want tiny spots, you can use a toothpick. And I'm gonna do spots of, I'm gonna use um, both items and then you can kind of see the different size spots you get. So when I'm going to use um, something like that to dip in, what I do is I actually just shake up my paint and then I use the cap for my, instead of squeezing some out because um, it doesn't waste so much and it's much easier to deal with. So what I'll do first is I'll add some dots with the toothpick and you can see how tiny they are. And you know, if you do like a few dots, they'll get smaller as you go. So you can do gradiated dots if you want to that way. And the more paint you have on it, the bigger the dots will be. And now if I, I'll just go over a couple of the dots with the pointy Q-tip and you can kind of see the difference. You do want to make sure you scrape off the excess and then with a very steady hand, just kind of dot a few on. See, just makes a little bit bigger of a dot. And now for the eyeballs, what we're going to do is we are going to grab our white paint again. And again, I'm just going to open it up and use it from the cap top. And for the eyeballs, we're going to dot two dots of white. And I'll tip it here so you can see. One, two, see they're tiny. You know, you could use googly eyes if you want some real cute ones for kids because the googly eyes are adorable. They just look a little bit more sophisticated if we do the little dots of paint. And then I'm just gonna dot underneath them with a black just to kind of give them a pupil. So what you end up with is kind of like a little, I'll hold it up 
so you can see. You end up with like a little half moon eye. Isn't that kind of cute? All right, so here's one that I've already done. All right here, I use toothpick bumps on the back just for something different. And um, we're going to prepare our clip. So you want to make sure you get all your painty stuff out of the way so you don't, and put your caps on your paint so you don't accidentally spill anything. For today's example, I'm just going to do the bread. So you'll notice when you open up your package of foam flowers, that you get six kind of bundled together. So choose one you want to use. I like this one here on the front. It's nice and full. And just snip it about a quarter of an inch um, from the bud. And then you're just want to fold over that wire. I like to do that just to make sure my flower is secure rather than cutting it too short. And then um, you're going to need your hot glue gun and you're going to need one of these spring back clips. And of course, you know, you can do the uh, do a pin if you prefer. And I like to open it up. That way, if I put too much glue on, I'm not going to glue the thing shut. Run a bead of glue. Actually, you know, it's a little bit easier if you just start with a little bit on the tip because the um, the flowers can be, the flowers and leaves can be a little bit um, floppy and tricky to adhere. I just cut this flower out of some plain green craft felt. Very easy. I used a die cut, but if you don't have a die cut, you can just freehand a few flowers. Not a big deal. This die cut is by Sizzix if you want to find the exact one. And then what I like to do is kind of overlap my flowers so they kind of, you kind of get this nice, um, nice full effect here. And I'm going to, ugh, going to continue through in that same manner. Probably really should leave this on the table so you don't burn yourself. I've got asbestos fingers here, so it doesn't bother me too bad. I'm just going to glue that on like that so you get that really nice um, overlapping leaf effect. And don't worry about um, don't worry about any hot glue you can see because when we put the glitter on, you're not going to be able to see that anymore. And the flower, we're just going to glue on like that. So you can go ahead and do that as well. The hot glue does a great job at adhering felt and foam to this barrette. All right, then you just want to give it a few seconds to dry before you proceed to the next step. All right, my barrette is cool. Um, what you want to do is get a clean brush and you want to cover your flower and your leaves with a little glue. Um, I like Mod Podge, but you can use whatever you like. Just make sure it's one that's going to dry clear. Most white glues will dry clear. Um, I like the Mod Podge because it does seem to dry very quickly and hold glitter really well. And then I'm just going to go in and uh, cover over my little leaves here. This will also give a little rigidity to the felt and make it um, make it hold up a little bit better too. And then I'm gonna start with my clear glitter because if a little clear glitter gets on the, the green, it's not a big deal, but we don't want green on the flower. So I'm just gonna start sprinkling. And the nice thing about the applicators here is that I don't waste a lot. A little bit comes out at a time. And I even let my kids use this glitter because, and my students, because they really, um, they really can control it. I don't worry that they're going to dump a whole thing of glitter on the table or on the floor. There, it's, it's just dispenses a little bit at a time. So that's all I have to waste, really. That's not bad. And then um, you can really just let this sit to dry for a few moments, and then um, we will finish it up. All right, my piece is dry enough to uh, to add our little ladybug on. So what I'm going to do is very carefully put a little drop of hot glue there. And I kind of twirl the gun after I get my drop down so that I don't get any uh, strings. And then I'm going to put my little ladybug right here in that glue and just kind of hold it for a second until it um, it dries. Oops, I grabbed the one that wasn't as bright, but that's all right. It still looks very pretty. Uh, so really, that's all there is to it. I'll show you this one that is completely dry here, and I'll set that guy aside. Um, so fun, so cute. Make them for yourself. Make them for your kids. I have a great time with this. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you want to see the supplies I used, you can visit our sponsor, Paper Mart. Find them online at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.